And I scaled all the highest of mountains And I stood at the edge of their peace but Good I... evening, my name is Ryan Harris and welcome to the class of 2021's graduation baccalaureate. Although this is not how we typically do baccalaureate, we are so happy you are here. We invite you to enjoy this moment of reflection on your time at Great Valley in anticipation of what lies ahead. Enjoy the words shared by students, teachers, and local pastors and priests. This year's baccalaureate theme is Compassionate Strength, as inspired by Great Valley engineering teacher, Mr. Giese. Mr. Giese took an approach to teaching during this COVID year where he taught through a lens of compassionate strength. In his words, I have made it my goal to be understanding with every situation I was presented with, so the students know they are cared about and that we want the best for them all. In conjunction with this, I also said to myself that I will not compromise on teaching the students and making sure to be, they continue to be prepared for life after high school. The synthesis of these mindsets brought me to the idea of compassionate strength. Instead of saying, this is what you need to get done or else you fail, I say, I understand the situation and I will work, for, work with you to overcome it and proceed with your work. Inspired by Mr. Giese's words, we are here tonight honoring this concept and being challenged by it. Treating everyone with compassionate strength is a great goal for all of us. May this evening inspire all of us to go out from Great Valley and treat each other with grace, kindness, understanding, and compassion. May we find strength to overcome obstacles and setbacks, and may, we, and may love show us the way. Starting our service tonight is Great Valley senior Stephen Coelho. Stephen will be reading the prayer of St. Saint Fr Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O divine master, grant that I may not so much seek. To be consoled as to console. To be understood as to understand. To be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Hi, my name is Madeline Anderson, and I'm a graduating senior of the class of 2021. This song is called Reckless Love by Corey Asbury. I hope you enjoy. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me You have been so, so good to me Before I took a breath You breathed your life in me You have been so, so kind to me Leaves the 99 I couldn't earn it 
don't deserve it Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God There's no shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me There's no wall you won't kick down Lie you won't tear down Reckless love of God. Hello, class of 2021. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Megan Daney, and I'm an English teacher, basketball coach, senior class, and student council advisor at the high school. Class of 2021, I would first like to say I am so proud of you all for getting to this point. Congratulations. It's wonderful to be so close to such a major accomplishment, especially under the circumstances of this past year. When I was asked to speak for baccalaureate, I immediately knew what I wanted to talk about, being authentically you. It's often viewed as optimal to put on a facade in attempts to be something you're not. But if there is any advice I can leave you with, it's to do the exact opposite. Live your life out loud and act as a lighthouse to everyone around you. Be unapologetically you whenever possible. Don't deprive the world of the light that you possess. Let people see it as a source of inspiration and a source of comfort. We all have times when being ourselves seems too boring, too extreme, or even just uncomfortable. But we are also in charge of holding ourselves accountable to ourselves. The world wants to know who you are and what you have to offer especially the world we face today that is so different and uncertain. I've come to know so many of you over the last four years in a variety of ways, whether it's from having you in class, coaching you, or just seeing you in the hallways enough times. From these experiences, I know what you all have is something so amazingly special to give to this world. Please don't ever forget that because the impact each of you has left on me will, quite honestly, never be forgotten. I wish you all nothing but the best, and I hope you live the loudest, brightest future lives you possibly can. Class of 2021, I hope you are as proud of yourselves as we are of all of you. Hello, Great Valley graduates and their loved ones. My name is Phil Over. I'm the Chester County Area Director for FCA, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Before COVID, you would have seen me around school a bit, but you'll still see me around coaching and volunteering in various sports. My family is a Great Valley family. My wife, Jill, teaches fourth grade at Katie Markley. My oldest son, Ryan, is just finishing up his sophomore year in high school. And my youngest son, Matthew, is just finishing seventh grade. You might be wondering what FCA is. It's pretty simple. FCA is uses the vehicle of sports to share the message of Jesus Christ. In doing that, we build a stronger community by reinforcing the biblical principles that already exist within the sporting arena. We support coaches nationally and internationally, but more importantly, we build coaches on a local level. Part of that building process is teaching coaches how to incorporate these principles into their teams, creating better teams and better communities around them. I would be remiss if I didn't mention how difficult this school year has been 
for the class of 2021 because of the COVID virus that swept through our nation and the world. We want this blessing to be an affirmation of the resolve, the resilience, and the ability to adapt that our seniors have not only demonstrated, but led their fellow students through. I bet you were expecting me to come out here in a suit and tie. But the theme for the class of 2021 this year was compassionate strength. My t-shirt is in support of that theme. I'd like to define each one of those words for you to help you understand the mantra that the students followed this year. Compassion is defined as sympathy and concern for the sufferings of others and the desire to alleviate that suffering. Strength is defined as the capacity of a person to withstand great force or pressure. Doesn't that sum up our seniors this year? They had to withstand such great force and pressure, all while keeping up with virtual classes and still functioning in a very unusual environment. The fact that they chose the theme Compassionate Strength tells you where their hearts lie for their fellow students and the world around them. Let's take this time now to lift a blessing over the Great Valley Senior Class of 2021. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the completion of this year of academics at Great Valley High School. We particularly want to thank you for the opportunity we have had to pour into each of these graduates and watch them grow through education, activities, and through adverse situations. We look with expectant joy to the future and bright hope conducts this prayer. In your word, you have said to us, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Please bless and guide our graduates as they reach this end and as they chart new beginnings. Through the compassionate strength they have learned, allow them to become men and women who truly care for others. We pray that we will be the same by what we have learned from these incredible students. Please help them to use compassionate strength to make the world a better place by serving others in your love and kinship. Let them seek to help those who are less fortunate or suffering. May they always seek to show a greater good through your love and plan for them. We know that some of them will experience pain and hardship. We know that some of them already have. We ask you through your divine grace to grant them solace and strength through those times. Finally, loving Father, we thank you for giving us the opportunity to show compassionate strength through these men and women while they were here with us. Though they will be leaving the halls of Great Valley High School, we know our school and community have been strengthened and enriched by their contributions here. We ask that the bonds that have been created here will remain strong and despite any physical difference between us, they will remain. We commit these students to your loving hand and knowing heart, dear Lord, with these final words. Oh, that you would bless them and enlarge their reach for you. Let your mighty and loving hand be with them and keep them from harm so that they may flourish and be free from pain. Lord, grant our request and bless these graduates. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you. Hi, I'm Sienna. I'm speaking on behalf of the class of 2021. For those of you who don't know me, a um, little introduction, I am a senior here. I am part of the track and field team. I'm part of NHS. And I don't know, I've just really felt like I've been a part of the community for four years. Um, and you're probably wondering, okay, yeah, but why is she speaking? Uh, for those of you who do know me, you're definitely wondering why I'm speaking. And it's because I wanted to do something different. I have gone to all the graduations because I play in the band and every year, the speeches seem exactly the same. It's about, wow, I can't believe how far we've come. And that's great, that's all well and good, and that needs to be acknowledged that yes, we all have changed as individuals, and I think that's awesome. But I wanna acknowledge where we are now. You know, we can talk forever about the memories we had at Henlopen when it was freezing cold, or DC and the DC dance, but I want to talk about this year in particular. And yes, 
we did have a pandemic, but everybody already knows that. We've already talked about that. Yes, we got through it. We all wore our masks to school. But as a community, we really came together this year, I feel like. I feel like we were able to accept the fact that we had to wear masks to school. We were able to accept the fact that the only way we were going to be able to graduate is if we followed all the rules of social distancing. And for the most part, the class of 2021, we did an excellent job with that, okay? So thank you to all of you guys who made it possible for this graduation to happen in person, all the senior activities to happen, the prom to happen. That was so exciting for those of you who were there. And... Just how interesting this year has been in terms of, at least for me, I feel like I've valued the friendships I've made at Great Valley a lot more than I did in the past because you're not seeing the same people that you see, that you've seen for the past 11 years. You, you're not there, or at least I'm not there all the time. And so seeing those people that you haven't seen in months is so exciting and it really puts a good feeling that we'll have that same feeling when we come back from college in one year, five years, 10 years, 20 years, whatnot. I feel like as a class, we, were all, we will all still be very close. And that to me is very cool because I feel like there are some classes of high school that go to college and they never talk to each other again. And I know for some of you, that sounds like a really great idea. Um, but for someone who's made as many connections as I have and as many of you have, I can't wait to see you all in the future, where you wind up, and what amazing things you're going to do. So with that being said, I hope you all have a great summer and a good freshman year of college. And I'll see you on the other side of graduation. That was dark. I'm so sorry. I'll see you on the other side of graduation. Thank you, class of 2021. Hari my name is Shravan Parkala, and I'm here to introduce you to my temple priest, Sri Santosh Garu. Hari Om, Sri Guru Bhyan Maha, Sadar Shiva Samaram Bham, Vyasa Shankar Madhyamam, Asmadacharya Pariyantam, Bande Guru Paramparam. Dear students, congratulations for completing the high school. We all know it's been a tough situation towards the end of your high school. You have, you were not physically present, few of them, and then you came back. It was a really rough time and, and it's great that you guys are, and you know, you guys have proven that you can achieve the success no matter how the situations are. And Great Valley High School, you know, it, it's a great cultivator of young adults coming into the world with a lots of success, a lot of value to the world. You know, we have seen your achievements, achievements from this school in various fields, uh, whether it be a social reach or science or math, art and music, sports, robotics, competitiveness and whatnot, right? We started our commencement with a shloka, Sadar Shiva Samaram Bham, Vyasa Shankar Madhyamam. See, our tradition of teaching or acquiring, no, acquiring knowledge or learning knowledge has been always through the gurus, through the teachers and our supreme teacher who is our supreme god, Ishwara and then followed by great, great saints like Valmiki, Vyasa, Adi Shankaracharya, Swami Vivekananda, Swami Chinmayananda and the teachers in your everyday life from schools, from teachers, um, from universities they teach us everything they can, they don't hide any secrets we all know that you know teachers for teacher are a student success is the biggest thing so we always prostrate to them we always salute them and no no day goes so that's why we start anything we start with a shri guru bhyo namaha that's that's the most important thing they they put all our, all their efforts and they believe in one philosophy that the greatest treasure in the life that can never be stolen neither be destroyed is knowledge. It grows as you spread it. The more you sow the seeds of knowledge, positive knowledge, the better the world and the mother earth becomes. You know, in, in Bhagavad Gita, which is the holy book of Hindu culture, Hindu tradition, Bhagavan said, Nahi jnane na sadisham 
पवित्रम इह विद्यते तत्स्वयं योग संसिद्ध काले नात्म निबिंदती सो देर इज नथिंग एज गुड एज नॉलेज पॉजिटिव नॉलेज नथिंग एज प्योर एज पॉसिबल नॉलेज सो ऑल ऑफ यू आर गोइंग टू यू नो स्टेप आउट ऑफ द स्कूल गोइंग टू द यूनिवर्सिटीज और कॉलेजेस एंड यू नो योर ओन प्रोफेशनल करियर पाथ्स टू टू लर्न थिंग्स यू कुड बिकम आर्टिस्ट ग्रेट टीचर्स इंजीनियर्स स्पोर्ट्समैन फिजिशियंस साइंटिस्ट्स लॉयर्स लीडर्स एंटरप्रेन्योर्स एंड वॉट आर द प्रोफेशन यू चूज टू बी any career path right but remember one thing is we have to live up with good ethics and spirituality it's important success is very important but not at the cost of negativity isn't it because as much responsibility you have to succeed more than that you have a responsibility towards the god towards the society so our request will be live up to those values you know there will be situations when you will think why should i do this what am i getting going to get out of it will i be, will i be able to enjoy the fruit the result right away in fact you may ne- you may never have a result that you can enjoy but that doesn't mean that you back off from the responsibility like in bhagavad gita bhagwan the supreme god said karmanyeva adhikaraste ma phaleshu kadachana you have every right on the duty you don't have any right on the results and just take another very good live example in our world dr jonas salk who discovered the polio vaccine just imagine had he patented it he could have become super rich but world would be still crippled with polio pandemic and when there was a press conference and someone asked dr jonas salk that uh, dr sol why didn't you patent it he said can you patent sun do you want to patent the sun so that's that's the kind of a thought process we want to deliver we want to grow up to the ethics and to the society because whatever you do to the society you do to the god we always want to live with one philosophy in the mind one request to the god in the mind sarve bhavantu sukhinah सर्वे सन्त निरामया सर्वे भद्रा पश्यंत माँ कशि दुख भाग भवे ओ गॉड मेक श्योर एवरी वन इज हैपी एवरी वन एवरी गुड पर्सन इवन अ बैड पर्सन इफ यू मेक दम हैपी दे बिकम गुड पर्सन सो वी हैव टू ट्रांसफॉर्म द बैड इन टू गुड आई वॉन्ट टू अगेन कंग्रेचुलेट यू फॉर दर अचीवमेंट ऑफ कंप्लीटिंग यूर हाई स्कूल इन दिस टफर सिचुएशन ऑल्सो and wish you all the best for your career and we all pray ishwar the almighty god to shower with blessings and success with this mantra om yo vai tam brahmano veda amrite navratam purim tasmai e brahma cha brahma cha ayu kirtim prajandadu om shante shante shanti hari om श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओम दिस नेक्स्ट सॉन्ग इज कॉल्ड हम्बल एंड काइंड परफॉर्म बाय टिम मग्रा नो देयर्स अ लाइट दैट क्लोज बाय द फ्रंट डोर डोंट फॉरगेट द कीज अंडर द मैट व्हेन योर चाइल्डहुड स्टार शाइन ऑलवेज स्टे होम in kind go to church cuz mom says to visit grandpa every chance that you get won't be a waste of time always stay humble and kind all the doors say please say thank you don't steal don't cheat and don't lie dreams you've been dreaming come to you and the work you put in is realized let yourself feel the pride but always stay humble and kind don't expect a free ride from 
grudge or a chip and here's why bitterness keeps you from flying always stay humble and kind know the difference between time with someone and spending time with someone you love love you ain't no pick up line always stay humble and kind oh the door say please say thank you don't steal don't cheat and don't lie i know you got mountains to climb but always stay humble and kind when the dreams you've been dreaming come to you and the work you put in let yourself feel the pride, but always stay humble and kind. When it's hot, eat a root beer popsicle. Turn off the AC and hold the windows down. Let that summer sun shine. Always stay humble and kind. Don't take for granted the love. This life gives you when you get where you're going don't forget to turn back around to help the next one in line always stay humble and kind hi for those of you who don't know me i'm dr b one of the high school chemistry teachers let me start by telling you a fish story once upon a time, two young fish were swimming along. They met an older fish swimming the other way who nodded at them and said, Morning, boys. How's the water? The two young fish swam on for a bit, but then one stopped, looked at the other and asked, What the heck is water? Now there's a truth. Often the most important realities are hard for us to see. One that I've been thinking about lately is the truth about caring. I believe here at Great Valley, we swim in an ocean of caring that is mostly invisible to us. Sure, we see the obvious. A friend says, how you doing? You look a little tired. A teacher asks, how was your game yesterday? Did you win? Oh, sorry to hear that. You could call these soft forms of caring but maybe you've experienced other harder kinds of caring as well. One day, your English teacher hands back an essay and says, Devin, you can do better. I know it. I've seen it. What's stopping you from achieving that more often? Or George, why don't you sign up for honors physics? Yeah, it'll be harder and more work, but would you rather be challenged or bored next year? Maybe you don't think that's caring. I'd argue it is. Teachers seeing your potential and caring enough to wake you to it. And what about structural forms of caring? Great Valley School District is a public endeavor, not a business. People in this community agree to care for you by providing the tools you need to eventually be a productive part of this or another community. We assume that these caring forms have always been there and always will be. But someone has to choose to create and maintain them so that one day, perhaps, we might notice them. Here's an example of caring created by you that I've swam in for the past few years. Each day, in every class, even online, you students say thank you as you leave the room. Yeah, you're noticing and thanking me for my caring, but in doing so, I experience a sense of being cared for. These thank yous started maybe four or five years ago with a few students in a couple classes. I remember thinking, hmm, that's so nice. Where'd that come from? And I imagined one elementary or middle school teacher caring enough to instill this habit in a few of you. And it spread over time, illustrating to me another attribute of caring, that it's a gift that grows from the past to our present. So, as you head out to your next adventure, wherever it is, maybe you could choose to create a puddle, pond, or lake of caring for others to swim in. 
It might be as simple as thanking your freshman professor for their lecture or thanking someone training you in your new job for their efforts or a harder form of caring, like choosing not to cancel someone, but enter into relationship with them. In any case, remember, it's always your vocation to be part of creating the ocean of caring we swim in. Thank you. Hi, my name is Marley Oliva, and I will be reading an excerpt from the poem, The Hill We Climb by US National Youth Poet Laureate, Amanda Gorman. And so we lift our gaze, not to what stands between us, but what stands before us. We close the divide because we know to put our future first. We must put our differences aside. We lay down our arms so we can reach out our arms to one another. We seek harm to none and harmony for all. Let the globe, if nothing else, say this is true. That even as we grieved, we grew. That even as we hurt, we hoped. That even as we tired, we tried. That we'll forever be tied together victorious. Not because we will never again know defeat, but because we will never again sow division. Scripture tells us to envision that everyone shall sit under their own vine and fig tree, and no one shall make them afraid. If we're to live up to our own time, then victory won't lie in the blade, but in all the bridges that we've made. That is the promise to the glade, the hill we climb, if only we dare. Good evening. My name is Rebecca Stern, and I'm honored to speak to all of you tonight. Class of 2021, I know I'm not alone in disbelief that we are about to graduate. Because of the disease that shall not be named, time has simultaneously stopped, slowed down, and sped up. Who knew we could pack a year of senior activities into about a month? But let's flash back first. When I think back to watching the class of 2020 graduate at home last year, a key word for me was change. The world felt like it was changing in every way, from important conversations about racial equity to safety guidelines. For many people, including myself, the instability was stressful, especially since I'm someone who used to order kids meals up to age 16. Don't worry, mom and dad, I've grown out of that. Since graduation last year, a huge change has been the space between us. For some people watching tonight, there hasn't been a lot of space between us since preschool, when we were the kids in the child development class running around the hallways and going on Easter egg hunts. In elementary school, our four schools created space between us. Everyone knows General Wayne was the best. But as we fearlessly competed in tug of war at field day, we were closer than ever. In middle school, that space became much smaller. As we roomed at Henlopen, got lost trying to use Mr. Leary's GPS and wished for access to Google Maps or explore DC together, we as a class became not four elementary school communities, but one student body. In high school, the space between us changed and shifted. We may have drifted apart from some friends, leaving emotional miles between us, or come back together within inches. As we walked through the packed halls and found our place at a table, we chose who we kept within arm's reach and who was up a hill. COVID-19 undoubtedly changed the space between us. Best friends became isolated two miles or even states apart. And when we eventually returned to school, it was defined by a six foot distance. However, whether we are three, six, 1000 or zero feet apart, the physical space between us shouldn't matter. I have learned this year that that kind of space means nothing compared to the emotional space between us. Can you call someone and will they be there for you, no matter what? Does that person accept you for everything you are and everything you aren't? The space between us isn't six feet. Although I know it technically is when we were in school. When physical proximity is taken away, we are forced to see what and who is left. This year, I realized that a close friend had absolutely nothing to do with physical proximity. Close when the people I would talk to for hours on FaceTime every day people who would spend their time supporting me through student council elections or making a college decision. By being given the gift of maybe too much free time, we were able to invest in the relationships that would last beyond a single test grade or a musical number. The space between us as a class is not six feet. It is filled with every memory we have together, from acting out Romeo and Juliet in Mrs. Ainucci's class freshman year, to trying to avoid getting crushed in a mosh pit at homecoming, 
to surviving midterms at finals, which we have collectively avoided for the past year. Go us. As we head off to college and go through life, the physical space between us and our closest friends and family will grow. Some people won't even be in the contiguous United States next year. From Westchester to California to Europe to Michigan to Florida to Pittsburgh, there will be a lot of space between us. It's our choice to decide if we want that space to be physical or emotional. How will we hold together our relationships as a class? We've done it before and yes, it is difficult. It's easy to lose sight of what we've gained this year in prioritizing relationships that aren't made simple by physical proximity. COVID-19 has unwillingly trained us for next year and how to be alone, away from home, together. That with hard work and the use of FaceTime, Zoom, and constant text messages, we can define and fill the space between us. Thank you and congratulations, class of 2021. Hey there, friends. My name is Becca Bruner. I'm one of the pastors at Paoli Presbyterian Church. And it is my honor to join you today for this baccalaureate service, celebrating the goodness of God in you and through you. Great Valley High School, class of 2021. As I begin today, I have a confession. And the confession is, I am very, very bad at math. I don't enjoy math. I never have. Me and math, we are not friends. True story. My senior year of high school, I was taking a math class, a very not advanced math class. And I did the full first semester of that class. And then getting into the second semester, I got that really nice, big, thick package in the mail from the college of my choice. I had been accepted into college. And I got that package, and uh, very soon after, after I celebrated a little bit, uh, I, I called, and I talked to the admissions counselor, and I asked them, I said, okay, um, thanks for accepting me. I'm wondering if I need this math class that I'm in right now. Do I have to complete it in order to continue to be accepted? And they said, and so the very first thing I did then, right after that, I got off the phone, I ran into the guidance counselor's office at, at my high school, and I got out of that math class. I withdrew. I was done. And I went to college, and, and I took a math class, probably the most basic, uh, rudimentary one that they offered. And I got through it. I think I passed. Uh, and I'm here now as a grown-up adult, even still, you know, people will ask me sometimes, like, you know, hey, what... What made you want to be a pastor? What 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 you get into ministry for? And and you know sometimes the most honest answer I can give is, I went into ministry because I was I was told there would be no math. But I'm here to tell you, that's not actually completely true. Against all odds, I'm here to talk to you today about a very very important math problem. This problem, this equation. Is, is simply this. Everything minus love equals nothing. Did you get that? It's a really, really important math equation. Everything minus love equals nothing. It's the basic math of life. And wouldn't you know it, God's the one who thought it up. Somebody asked Jesus one time, we read about this in our Christian scriptures, somebody asked Jesus, they said, how do we live the good life? You know, how do, how do I really get everything I want out of this life? And Jesus answered him. He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. That's how to live, Jesus said. He said, to love is all that matters. A new command I give you, Jesus told his followers. Love one another. You know, a couple decades ago, there was a philosopher named Hugh Moorhead, 
And he actually, uh, he wanted to know the answer to this question, you know, how do I live the good life? And so he wrote letters to some of the, the best known intellectual people of his day, 250 of them, the smartest people on earth. And he wrote to them and he asked them, tell me, please help me understand what's the meaning of life? And he got all the answers that were sent back to them and he published them in a book. Some of them you know, honestly, these intellectuals, these smartest people in the world, some of them confess they just made up their answer. What's the meaning of life? They just made it up out of thin air, whatever they came to mind. Some of them said they had no idea. And some of them, actually, some of the most brilliant minds in the world, they wrote back to this guy, Hugh Moorhead, and they said, you know what? If you find out, could you let me know? But I'll tell you, the Bible has an answer to that question. What's the meaning of life? If you ask the Bible, it's got one word, and that's love. Life is all about love. Love is so central, so vital, so absolutely essential to living a good life that without it, without love, the Bible says that the good life is actually impossible. Here's how the Bible says that. It's a, found in a letter written to one of the earliest Christian communities that existed, it's written by a guy named the Apostle Paul. And Paul writes this. He says, If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Doesn't matter how much I know. Doesn't matter how much I have. The Bible says you could be the smartest person in the world. You could win more than that guy who won the whole game of Jeopardy. You could have it all. And if you don't have love, in other words, I can have everything, do everything, know everything, win everything, but without love, it's nothing. Everything minus love equals nothing. Well, as you know, it's the end of the school year, and every year around this time, awards are given out. Some of them are official, things like valedictorian and summa cum laude, that kind of stuff. You know, some of them are, are less official. I, I remember in my high school yearbook that we were awards given for things like best hair. Maybe you won that one. Uh, but today I want to propose a different kind of award. I want to celebrate a different way of being, not based on knowing it all or having it all or accomplishing it all, but rather on loving all. Having what you might call the most compassionate strength. And so here are those awards. To the student with friends scattered hither and yon across grades and groups and genders. You may feel like an outsider at every insider gathering. You may wonder what it feels like to feel deeply enfolded within a group whose very membership confers identity. In truth, membership in a group always feels provisional. Insiders inevitably wonder if they're the next to be cast out. But a gift for love and friendship that transcends circumstance, for recognizing kinship wherever it blooms, that gift will make the world your home. To the student who sits at the back of the room with a history textbook propped open and a library book tucked inside, you'll have to learn history. There's no getting around it, but we revel in your love for the written word. In times of trial and worry, of disappointment and despair, a book could be your shield. Immersing yourself in a grand story will be a respite from your troubles. And a lifetime spent lingering over languages will give you the right words when you need them for yourself. No one writes a better love letter than a lifelong reader. To the student who fled to the restroom on dissection day and took a zero in biology lab, 
It's a great gift to love animals. When you can sit quietly in the presence of another creature, when you can earn a fearful animal's trust, you are participating in the kingdom of God. Whatever it may seem to almost everyone else, this planet is a great, breathing, vulnerable, living being, and we are each of us only one of its cells. We celebrate the tender heart that has taught you this truth, so urgent and so easily overlooked. To the student who bombed the math final because you stayed up all night talking to a friend whose heart was breaking, there is honor in your choice. You can make up the math lesson, but compassion is not a subject we offer in school. Today we rejoice for the A that you have earned in compassionate strength, the blue ribbon that you have won in love. My friends, to all of you today who are about to become graduates of Great Valley High School, that is an esteemed title indeed. And as you go out from this place to the the next great adventures that, that life has for you, I am confident that you have the ability to do much, to learn much, to accomplish much, to acquire much. You have within you the capability to achieve the good life and all that that offers. But let me warn you, that good life will always elude you if you live your life without love. Jesus said that the real good life happens when you love when you make the choice to live every aspect of your life with compassionate strength. I'm never going to be all that good at math, but I do know this. Everything minus love equals nothing. But even the tiniest little something done in love, well, that's everything. So I invite you to pray with me. God, we thank you that you are a God of love. We praise you for creating this world in love and creating us to love. We know that you are love and so that anyone who loves gets to know you a little bit better, a little bit more. So I pray for these graduates today. I pray that you would fill them with your abiding powerful, unconditional love. May they come to know how deeply they are loved by you, their creator. And in turn, may they love this world and the people that you created with that same love. And may that love change the world. Amen. As we end tonight's program, Let us unite our hearts in prayer and entrust our Great Valley graduates to the hands of our Lord Jesus Christ. May God who began this great work in you carry it through to completion, enabling you to use your talents to the fullest. May God give you the grace to make wise choices and be faithful to your commitments, always confident in his unfailing love and the support of those who love you. May God move you to tears for those who suffer pain, rejection, starvation, despair, so that you will reach out your hand to comfort them and change their pain to joy. May God instill into you righteous anger at injustice, oppression, and the exploitation of people so that you will work and pray for justice, equality, and peace. May God bless you with the vision to know that you can make a difference in the world so that through his strength and knowledge he has given you, you will do the things which others tell you cannot be done. May your integrity be a gift to the world and may the spirit of God be with you always. We ask all of these things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen.